this specific webinar. The University of Calgary. Sorry, I'm just trying to get to the next slide. Here we go. Awesome. So it's really great to have all you guys here um, that have joined so far. If a couple more people join as we go, totally okay. Um, I'm just going to say now, since you guys have attended this event or are attending this event, you are actually going to have your application fee waived. Um, so if you guys could all go ahead and leave your um, legal first and last name in the chat, just so that my lovely colleague Vanessa can write those down, just so we make sure that um, we can get your application fee waived, or if you've already paid it, we can have it refunded or we can have it um, like the credit card transaction reverse. So um, if everyone could go ahead and do that, I'll mention again later in case anyone else joins, um, that would be lovely whenever you have the time for that. Um, as I go through this, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A, put them in the chat. Vanessa is here to kind of answer some of the questions as we go. Um, and we'll also take questions at the very end too. So um, if you want to stick around for that as well. Um, without further ado, I'll get started. Um, so my name is Galen McDonald. I'm the Indigenous Student Recruitment Assistant here at the University of Calgary. Um, my job really is to support incoming and prospective Indigenous students. So whether that's um, walking through application, um, how to do an application uh, for people who've never applied for the post-secondary before, um, how to, um, what are the specific requirements for the programs, what are the programs about, um, what kind of Indigenous programming we have at the University of Calgary and the Indigenous support. So I'm going to go over a couple of things today about the University of Calgary, about the um, programs that we offer, about admission requirements, about the Indigenous admissions pathways, um, and a couple of student life things. So awesome. Um, um, a little bit about me. I'm a current student, so I'm in my third year of film studies at the University of Calgary, so I do have a lot of experience of recently applying to the university, um, making that decision of which university I wanted to go to, so I have a lot of experience with that. If anyone has any questions, um, yeah, we'll get started. Um, so I would like to start this off just by acknowledging the land that the University of Calgary does sit on. Um, I feel this is very important before um, doing any presentation I do because I'm not traditionally from Treaty 7. I'm actually from Treaty 6 in Saskatchewan. I'm um, Cree from Thunder Child First Nations. Um, so being able to live here um, and learn here and grow here is just really important to me. And so I love to acknowledge the land that I um, get the honor of doing that on. Yeah. So uh, the University of Calgary is located in the heart of Southern Alberta, it both acknowledges and pays tribute to the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7, including the back of the Confederacy, comprising of the Sitka, the Fikani, the Gainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nations, the Stony Nakoda, um, including Chiniki, Verespa, and Good Stony First Nations. Um, the city of Calgary also is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Awesome. Before we get into any big information, I just wanted to leave this QR code here for a second. This just has all of our view books. So if anyone wanted to get this on their phone right away so that you can look, um, a lot of the information I'll be talking to is also on these books. So if you ever need to look back on it, this is a really great resource to have. So we have our general view book here, um, just has all the general information about the University of Calgary, our programs or program requirements, anything like that great place to check. Um, and the next we have our Indigenous view book. So this has all of the Indigenous specific um, supports and um, pathways that we have as well, as well as my contact information. So if you ever don't know where to find it, you can find it in the book as well. I'll just leave this up here for a second if anyone wants to grab that. Move on. Cool. Um, I, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna move my face. So I'm not covering everything. Um, so just looking at Alberta as a whole, and what it kind of looks like to study post-secondary in Alberta as opposed to any other province. Um, there's a lot of benefits actually to choosing to study in Alberta rather than say like BC or Saskatchewan. Um, we actually have zero provincial sales tax, which means that your cost of living goes down quite significantly um, no matter where you are in Alberta. So we don't pay pay extra sales tax on top of um, everything you purchase. So that kind of adds up as you buy things, as you live. Um, so having that at, uh, in Alberta is a really, really nice advantage. Um, we also have just a beautiful, beautiful landscape here in Alberta. Um, as you can see on the little map here, we have um, five national parks that are super close or in relatively close by to the University of Calgary. Um, for example, we have Banff, we have Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump. Um, we have um, Drumheller in the Dino Provincial Park. Um, we also have Jasper, which is not too, too far. Um, they're all really, really great places. Um, sometimes on weekends, I just like to drive up to Banff, just hang out. Um, I'll go on hikes on the weekends sometimes. So it's really nice to have it so close by so that you can just go blow off steam on the weekends or just have that available to you in general. Um, yeah, those are my favorite things about Alberta. 
And moving on to Calgary, um, Calgary is also a really nice city to live in um, and to start taking your post-secondary education in. So to talk a little bit about the city itself, um, we are the seventh most livable, most livable city in the world. And what that really means, um, it's based on a couple of things like safety, um, cost of living, um, innovation, anything like that is kind of what trails down to what makes us the seventh most livable city in the world. Um, we, as I said, we have a um, pretty low cost of living compared to other provinces. We're also pretty safe as a city and whole. Um, so having to choose Calgary as a place to live is a really great option for a lot of people. Um, we're also Canada's major sun, major sunny, sorry, we're also um, Canada's sunniest major city. Um, we get tons of Chinooks throughout the year as well, which means the temperature kind of fluctuates sometimes, especially in the winter. Um, meaning that some days it might be super, super cold, um, but then the next week it's super, super warm and it kind of fluctuates back and forth and it gives a really nice break um, to the doom and gloom of winter of what it can be sometimes. Um, so getting a break like that as well, the sun just helps so much to keep um, that your spirits up, keep your um, positivity high. So really great um, fact about Calgary. We also have, um, we have the most uh, patents per capita, as well as the second highest number of small businesses per capita. Um, so Calgary really is just a city of innovators. Um, there's tons and tons of things being invented. There's tons of small businesses constantly running. Um, so if you are looking to start your own um, creation, start your own business, Calgary has so many different opportunities that are running all throughout the year. Um, and the University of Calgary as well, just so we can start building those innovators and start building those companies. So if that is your end goal, Calgary is a really great place to do that. Also, moving on to the university itself and a couple of little facts here before we get into the big details. So we were founded in 1966. Um, we're a relatively new university compared to some other universities in Calgary. Um, some of our buildings are um, a little bit older, but they're constantly, constantly being renovated, um, constantly being um, upgraded. So they're all state of the art. All of our classrooms are ready for modern day technology. There's laptop chargers, um, there's smart screens, anything like that. We have it on campus. Um, yeah, we also have about 1,200 Indigenous students. We have a pretty big Indigenous population on Cal um, on campus, um, with tons and tons of supports for Indigenous students. It's kind of like a little um, little pocket in the University of Calgary. It's really nice. Um, we also have a 95 undergraduate retention rate, and what that really means is that students who choose to come to our university for their first year end up liking the experience they have and decide to come back for a second year, a third year, and eventually graduating with us. So we tend to um, live up to the expectation of what students have for university and give a positive experience overall, and students choose to stay with us rather than transfer to another university. So really, really great um, in that way. We also have five different campuses and 14 different faculties, 10 of which are at the undergraduate level, and we'll talk a little bit about those in a little bit when we start going over academics. Awesome. So this is a map of our campus. As you can see, it is a little bit big. Um, just looking from one side to the other. It's not a crazy far walk. Um, I've had a class in Craigie Hall down here at the bottom and I've had to walk up in 15 minutes to the Shulip Complex and I probably did it in eight. So it's not crazy far walking from one side of the campus to the other as well. A really nice great addition to our campus is that all of our buildings except for two are connected by plus 15s and tunnels. So if it is ever like a super crazy cold day, if it's snowing, if it's raining, if it's super hot outside, you don't necessarily have to go outside into um, the nature right away. You can go through all the plus 15s if you ever need to, um, which is a really great addition, especially if you're living on campus. So you don't have to bring around a giant winter jacket with you every day. Um, you can leave it in your dorm, come through the tunnels, and then go through the campus without ever going outside. So really great addition through there. Um, yeah, uh, one thing I also like to point out about our campus is our LRT station up at the top there. We have a really great access to the LRT and the train lines um, at the University of Calgary. You have a student pass um, for the transit that comes with your tuition and fees. So you're able to use the train or the buses to get around the city. Um, it makes it super, super nice um, if you ever need to get anywhere in the city, if you're ever going from one side to the other, especially if you don't drive, you have access to it and it's close by. Um, there's also tons of different bus loops that go throughout the campus. So if you need to get here by bus, really, really great, really close. Down there at Craigie Hall, that's the one I mostly use. There's a bus that drops off right there. And it's like a two minute walk into the building I had to go into. So super, super great and super close. 
Um, so moving on to what it looks like to live on campus, if anyone is considering that, if maybe you're from out of the city or you just want that experience of living um, in a college dorm, this is kind of what it looks like. You can see a little example of what the rooms look like there. Those are our kind of most basic um, cheapest options for accommodations. We do have single rooms and we do have different styles. They just cost a little bit more and you have to apply for them. Um, and the first year of the style that we have there is a lottery basis. So if you wanted to um, apply to get a single room, it's a lottery pick, um, just so you know. Um, other than that, if you come in with someone that you already know, you can automatically put down their name and you'll be paired together to live um, as roommates. Um, and if you don't have that, you kind of get put into a questionnaire that um, judges your best interests um, and kind of matches do it matches you with someone who's going to be compatible to you. Um, so whether that's someone who has a similar interest as you, a similar schedule to you so that you're not waking each other up every time you leave, or um, someone in the same program or the same faculty. So a lot of people meet a lot of really great friends um, while living on campus, and there's tons of great opportunities to do there as well. Um, worth noting that if you do choose to live on residency, you will have to get a meal plan just for your first year. And this is just really so we can make sure students aren't struggling to find food, especially if you're adjusting to your first year of university. It can be quite different from high school. So it's just another thing that you don't have to worry about. Um, so you'll have full access either for five days or seven days to our food lodge there, as you can see in the middle picture there. Um, and it's all you can eat. So you just come in with a swipe. Um, you get unlimited swipes throughout the day, either for five days or seven days, but depending on the meal plan that you prefer. Um, and you're just able to take as much as you can. It's buffet style with halal, vegetarian, and gluten-free options. Um, so it's a really great um, thing to have just in your first year. So you don't have to worry about getting groceries, cooking every night, nothing like that. Awesome. So getting into a little bit about what the University of Calgary is actually like to study at, we don't like to just focus on the academic side. We also love to look at the student experience and making it a positive experience for students. So we'll get into a couple of highlights here. So what I really like to look at is our clubs. We have over 300 clubs here at the University of Calgary, and they range from a variety of different things, whether they're um, cultural clubs, social clubs, personal interest clubs, um, academic clubs, anything like that. There's tons and tons of clubs that you can join depending on your interests or um, the kind of people you want to start meeting on campus. Um, me personally, I am a part of the plant club. And so um, once a month, I go to a meeting and I talk about my plants. I get advice from my plants. Um, really, really fun. It's just a nice casual club that I get to go to and to meet other people with similar interests as me. So great opportunities. A couple I like to highlight for Indigenous students is our Indigenous Student Circle and our Calgary Indigenous STEAM Students Association. Yeah. These are religious clubs created by Indigenous students to support Indigenous students, and they're all student-run. Um, the Indigenous Student Circle, they run different events throughout the year, so they plan um, like we have um, an Indigenous Peoples Week in the springtime every year. They plan a lot of the events that go on um, and they really just focus on how to best support other Indigenous students and how to support each other. So great opportunities through there to meet new people through clubs. Awesome. So getting active, we have tons and tons of athletic facilities on a campus. Um, a couple that I like to point out is our, our fitness center, which is a 10,000 square foot um, athletic center with gym equipment, a running track, um, anything you could really need. It is also all included in your student pass. So you don't have to pay extra for a gym membership. You don't have to pay extra to get um, access to like a racket center or an arena or um, a swimming pool. We also have a bouldering wall. They're all come with our students, um, your card. So you just have to show your number and then you're allowed in there. It comes with your tuition and fees. So something really, really great to take advantage of, especially if you're already paying for it in a kind of a way. Yeah. Um, Ones I personally like to take advantage of. Um, I'm a climber, so I like to go on the bouldering wall quite often. We also have uh, like a, just a general climbing wall. I'm a little bit scared of heights, so I don't use that one as much, but other athletic facilities are a really great opportunity to keep active on campus. That can really help with your mental health um, and just, just general, general wellness. Awesome, and we have tons of different student supports on campus as well, um, going from things like our the Student Success Center is a really great um, student support on campus as they support students throughout their studies. So moving from the transition from high school to university can be quite 
different for a lot of students. It is quite different learning how to write a um, university style essay, learning how to um, take notes efficiently in a lab full of like 500 people. It can be a big transition for a lot of people. So we have um, the supports available for students to get support if they are struggling or get ahead of the game and um, learn how to best take notes in class, how to write an essay properly, anything like that. We have the supports available for students. Um, we also have our student wellness services. So if you're moving to Calgary for the first time, you're leaving your dentist behind, your doctor behind, your optometrist behind, and you have to find all these new things in the city. It's a really nice um, accommodation to have because we already just have it on campus available for you. So we have a dentist office, we have an optometry office, and we have a um, doctor's office, all available for students to use whenever they need. Um, it's a really great opportunity there as well. I like to highlight the Writing Symbols Lodge. So the Writing Symbols Lodge is the Indigenous hub on campus. It is really just a space and an office space for students um, with workers dedicated to supporting them. Um, within the Writing Symbols Lodge, there is a study space. Um, there's a lunch space. There's a cultural room with um, smudge if you ever need to smudge throughout the day. Um, we have it available. We have a computer lab, there's lockers, um, and there's other um, drop-in supports available as well. So throughout the week, they have different advisors that come in. They post their schedule on the door. So they have drop-in writing advice, drop-in accommodations. So if you have um, an IPP or any like um, learning accommodations, you can set that up through the Writing Symbols Lodge because they have advisors that come in to support that. Um, we also have different academic, um, personal, and um, academic advising as well so if you need help with your courses if you just need help and you just want someone to talk to we have that or if you just want cultural advising all of that is available available through the writing symbols lodge as well as tons of different programming that they offer um as well as the indigenous graduation ceremony and orientation so you get to start a little bit earlier the week before classes start and meet other indigenous students get a feel of the space um learn about what different supports you do have on campus here as well. When you're done with us, um, you get an Indigenous specific graduation ceremony on top of your convocation that you already get. So really great opportunities to run through the writings in this lunch. So getting into a little bit more of what the academic life looks like at the University of Calgary. I just have a couple of highlights here before we get into the programming. Awesome. So the first one I like to highlight is our study abroad program. Um, so there's study abroad program, um, you're able to travel to up to 45 different countries um, and just travel and start taking university credits um, at the same time as like visit, um, exploring the world. So it's a really, really great program that we have through our study abroad. Um, one of the really, really key benefits is that you aren't actually paying any more tuition than you would be if you were a um, general student studying at the Calgary campus. So you pay the exact same tuition if you're, say, in Spain than you would if you were in Calgary. So great, great options. Um, I really suggest studying abroad for students who are maybe considering or on the fence about going to university right away. Because um, I know out of high school, it can be a choice of, do I want to take some time off and just travel and explore? Or do I want to study? So we have a really great program so that students don't necessarily have to choose. They can do both at the same time. I'm just going to take a second here. I just want to make sure no one is trying to talk to me. Perfect. Okay. Vanessa should be in the chat answering any questions you guys have, but if anything um, doesn't get answered or comes up later on, um, I'll take questions at the end as well. Awesome. So getting into what work integrated learning looks like. Um, so work integrated learning is a opportunity for students to start working in positions that they would um, after they graduate, but before they graduate. So you get to start really building your skills and your technical skills actually in the position you're wanting to go into, or um, even just building your resume. It looks really, really great. Um, so we have different uh, options that kind of go depending on your program. So we have um, co-op positions, we have internships, and we have practicums. So practicums are going to be the only ones that are unpaid. And this is just because it's built into the curriculum already. So um, this is for nursing, education, and kinesiology students. So those students won't necessarily have to, um, they don't have to do their working in like the field outside of their studies. They do it already in the studies. It's built into the four-year curriculum. So 
Um, that's the reason that's unpaid is because every student's going to be doing the exact same. Um, whereas internships and co-op are um, paid positions, you actually start working in an office, in um, an engineering space, anything like that. Um, and you get paid for it and you build your resume. So really great opportunities through work and creative learning. Awesome. So these are our 10 undergraduate faculties that we offer um, to students. Sorry, I just want to make sure. How do we show we participated in this when we apply? So that is a really great question. I will actually address this in a couple of slides because I have something to talk about this with. So hold on to your question, Ava. I will answer you in just one minute. I just want to go over the faculties and then get into more of the admissions and how to apply and how um, you're going to have your application fee waived. I'll talk about that in a second. Awesome. So these are our 10 undergraduate uh, faculties that students are able to take at the undergraduate level. Um, I'll talk through a, a couple of the highlights um, and what that kind of looks like, depending on your faculty that you're interested in. Sorry, it keeps. Perfect. Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the School of Architecture, Planning, and Landscape. So the only program um, within this school is our design and city innovation program. This is also our newest faculty that opened up just last year. They just had their first, uh, they just finished their first um, intake of students and are on their second one right now. So it's a really great and really exciting program. Um, it is a program really designed for students who are interested in going into architecture or any sort of landscaping city design um, it is really focused towards that side of things. Um, worth noting, a lot of students who are interested in becoming a architecture, um, that pathway does take a little bit longer compared to other um, career choices, just because the education ends up being having to get an undergraduate degree and then getting um, another degree after that for architecture specifically. Um, it's just built that way for all um, universities within Calgary, or I'm sorry, in Canada. It is worth noting though that for our design and city innovation program, where the um, architecture graduate program is three years typically, if you do take the design and city innovation undergraduate degree, which is a four year program, it lessens the after part by one year. So instead of taking um, seven years total, it's gonna end up being six instead. So really, really great for students who are interested in going into architecture and maybe are a little bit intimidated by how long it takes to get into that field. This can lessen it by a little bit and really get you connected with um, industry experts and start working with people who um, just building really great connections for that. Yeah. Next is our faculty of arts. Arts is a very um, large program. So um, it holds tons and tons of different programs. It's our biggest and most diverse faculty um, through the University of Calgary. As you can see, it goes from things like languages, um, psychology, some sciences, um, fine arts, uh, such as like um, dance, drama, visual studies, um, all the way around. I'm personally biased because I am in the Bachelor of Film Studies program and I quite enjoy it. So I would highly recommend arts to anyone who's considering. Um, super, super broad, though, and really flexible options for applying to the Faculty of Arts as well, and as well as what courses you'll actually end up taking. Um, a lot of it tends to be electives, depending on your program. Um, one thing I'd like to point out um, is that some of our programs are all kind of offered twice on here, as you can see. For example, psychology is either offered through a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts, um, and the real difference between that is the programming itself and the admission requirements. So for psychology and the science, you're going to be required to have more science high school courses when applying, whereas um, our psychology and the arts is a little bit um, more humanities based, more um, going into like the counseling side of psychology um, with less scientific requirements as well. So just really depending on what your strong suits are and how you want to pursue psychology, we have different options available. Um, and that's the same for a couple of other programs. Awesome, working into our Workland School of Education. So this is our program um, that's going to get you certified to be a teacher. So what's really great about our education program is that it is really customizable for what you you want to be teaching, who you want to be teaching, and what you want to be teaching. So you can choose your teachable subject area as well if you want to teach elementary, secondary, or just K to 12. Um, you're also able to customize if you want to do a four-year or a five-year combined degree. So the real difference between that is the four-year. It's quick. It's the quickest way to get certified as a teacher. Um, you're still able to take your teachable subject area um, you can go through that way, where the five-year is a combined program. So you're going to be taking, um, it's one extra year, but you're going to be 
graduating with a degree in both your teachable subject area as well as education. So we recommend that for students who are maybe a little bit more passionate about what their teaching uh, teachable subject area is and just want to learn a little bit more as you end up having more of those courses completely focused um, on your teachable subject area rather than education. And going on to our Husking School of Business. So we have 15 different concentrates that students can choose on depending on their interest within the business sector. So you can choose from things like marketing to risk management, insurance and finance, whatever is your preference or whatever you're most interested in, you can accommodate your learning to look what that looks like. Um, even if you don't know what you want to go into, you can apply into our general business, which is the second bullet point down there, um, and then change over if you end up liking certain aspects of business, or you can also just graduate in general business as well, and it kind of covers the whole specter rather than more of a um, specialized um, look into business. Next is our Schulich School of Engineering. So this is our engineering program. Um, this one's a little bit interesting and a little bit different compared to other programs where you get to customize it a little bit more. Engineering, all students are going to be applying into a first common year. Um, that's just so we can make sure students have all the same baseline knowledge before going into their specialization. Um, uh, if com you complete all 10 courses successfully, you will automatically um, get admission into your um, specialty that is listed here, um, but the first year is going to be the same as every other student. Moving on to our Faculty of Science. Our Faculty of Science, of course, this is where all of our science-based programs are going to lie. So looking at things like biology, um, biochemistry, zoology, anything computer related, sorry, anything science related, you'll find here in the Faculty of Science. Um, a couple ones I like to highlight is our astrophysics program. Not a lot of students think about going into astrophysics after high school, but it is a really cool program. Um, we actually have an observatory outside of Calgary there where um, students do projects, they do research through there. So really, really great. Also a lot of the professors that work um, as uh, through our program are also working part-time at NASA or different um, space-related programming so that you're getting people with true hands-on experience and have like a step into the industry already. So really great connections through there and tons and tons of research opportunities through our faculty of science. Next is our faculty of kinesiology. So kinesiology is more of our program based on like health science. We are actually the number one sports medicine school in North America. So if you're considering going into anything related to coaching, kinesiology, leadership and coaching, it's a really great program to go through. Again, tons and tons of research um, is done through the University of Calgary um, just by itself. So you get tons of opportunity to start working um, and start physically doing what you're so passionate about, um, working towards your degree that way. Next is our Faculty of Nursing. So our nursing program, um, it's currently undergoing a couple of changes. So there'll be more updates as that comes out. But our program is a really cool program um, compared to some other nursing programs as all, all of our classrooms for nursing are actually built to look like hospital rooms. Um, as well, there are simulation labs um, all throughout the nursing um, program so that students can start getting that hands-on experience before even stepping foot into a hospital, into the real situation. So um, yeah, we really prepare our students um, at maybe more of a low stakes um, like hands-on experience before actually putting them into the real hospital with their practicums. Um, so the pressure is not as hard when you suddenly go from the classroom into a hospital. We really try and bridge our students so that they're most, the most successful that they can be going into that. Next is our coming school of medicine. So this is our program related to medicine. It's not necessarily a pre-med program. So if you're interested in becoming a doctor, um, you don't have to go through the coming school of medicine. You can really go through um, any undergraduate program to get into that. Some programs like science or medicine or kinesiology do tend to prepare students um, just for what they're going to be learning in the future, but definitely not required. So we have a couple of programs through the Coming School of Medicine at the undergraduate level. These are really just research-based, so going on to um, what the research behind medical field really looks like. Um, we have three honors only programs here um, for bioinformatics, biomedical science and health and society, as well as our Bachelor of Communication, or sorry, our Bachelor of Community Rehabilitation. Um, a couple that I wanna note here at the bottom. So these programs at the bottom right are programs that do require previous post-secondary study. 
So that is looking at things like um, law, medicine, social work, all of those programs do require you to do at least two years of previous post-secondary before applying into those, if not four. So if you have specific questions about what those look like and the pathways and how to kind of get to those end goals, I'm totally happy to talk about what that looks like. Awesome. So actually applying to the University of Calgary, I know we had a question earlier about how to um prove that you attended this event to get your application fee waiver. Um, so we're actually taking down all of your names. Um, yeah, if anyone didn't know that attending this event today does grant you an application fee waiver. So that $125 that you would normally be paying to apply to the University of Calgary, it's gonna be waived. And if you've already paid for it, um, you're just going to um, have it refunded and we're still gonna take back your name or have your credit card um, payment reversed. So either way, um, We'll waive that application fee for you guys. All you have to do on your end is put your first and last name um, into the comments. And my colleague Vanessa here with me will be taking those down so that we can make sure every student who has attended, um, we either waive their application fee as you apply or um, we refund it if you've already applied. Yeah. Um, so starting from today, you'll have one week to complete your application. Um, to get the application fee waiver. So we're gonna be going through all of the names that we have on our list and comparing them to the applications we've received and waiving them in a week from now. So you have one week to make that application. <laughs> and how you actually do that application is on this page here. So you're gonna submit an application online through Apply Alberta. Um, you're eligible for two programs. So you can pick a first and a second choice program um, depending on your um, interests. Typically we recommend students choose a second choice program that's a little bit of a lower competitive average um, just because it's only gonna be considered if you are either waitlisted for your first choice program or are, are, are not able to be admitted into your first choice program. So still something that you'd be happy with, but maybe a little bit easier, maybe it has similar um, classes to your first choice so that you can kind of transfer them up if you choose to do that in your next year. Yeah. Um, after you create your application for the students who have attended this event, um, if you haven't applied yet, we're gonna request that you choose the third payment option, which says choose alternative payment option. Um, it'll appear on your checklist as you haven't paid your application fee yet. And it'll stay that way for a week until we go through all the applications um, and waive those fees for you. So you don't have to do anything on your end. Um, please don't think you have to pay that just to get reimbursed. You don't have to pay it if you choose the third option of um, choose alternate payment option. We'll take care of that on our end. If anyone has any questions um, specifically about how to do that, we'll answer them at the end here. Um, yeah. So after you have created your application, you've had your application be waived, um, you'll have to just provide um, required documents. So what that looks like can be transcripts. Um, if you've taken post-secondary, your post-secondary transcripts, and then your high school transcripts. Yeah. Um, certain students will be required to submit Indigenous and ancestry documents, but we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Awesome. Um, so on your application, you will have the choice to self-identify as application, um, sorry, self-identify as Indigenous on your application. Um, and there's tons and tons of benefits to choosing to self-identify. Um, some students maybe don't think there is a benefit to doing it or don't see the point. Um, so I'll just talk about a couple of highlights that you do get if you do self-identify um, on your application. Um, so first, you'll be connected with the Indigenous recruitment team. So that is myself and Alicia on the side there. Um, we're really here to support you through any questions, any concerns that you have. If something comes up on your student center that you don't understand, we're here to support you, to walk you through what that looks like. Um, if you're confused by any process or um, any steps along the way, we're here to support you. So anything that we can do to help um, get you to the University of Calgary, that is your goal. We're here to do. Yeah. Um, the next thing you'll be considered for Indigenous admissions pathways. Um, and I'll talk about that. It is my next slide. Um, and you'll also be connected with the Writing Symbols Lodge. So as I talked about earlier, they run all of the events for current Indigenous students. And they're the biggest support for um, Indigenous students on campus. Awesome. Um, so what are we actually looking for on your application when you apply? So we're going to be looking at five specific courses um, and a competitive average. Depending on whichever program you're interested in, it will change. You can see a better estimate on our website. If you just look at um, admission requirements through our website, you can find everything that you need. Um, it'll say specifically for your program, the exact courses that you are looking to have at high school, and then the competitive average to kind of average those through. 
Um, an example of what that kind of looks like, though, is our Bachelor of Arts in International Relations down at the bottom. You're going to need an English, um, so 30-1, and then three approved courses, and then a fifth approved course or option. So it's a, little, a lot of the programs in the arts are a little bit more flexible about what that can look like for you. Um, we're going to take the highest competitive average. So say you have three approved courses, um, sorry, you have four approved courses, and one of them has a really bad grade. We're going to take the three highest ones compared to the lower ones. Um, Whereas programs such as like the Bachelor of Science and Engineering, um, they're a little bit more picky about what courses they want you coming in with. And that's just so we make sure you're going to be successful in your program. Having these courses are kind of the baseline knowledge that you need to succeed in the program as well. Um, so really, we're looking for English, pre-calculus, calculus, chemistry, and then physics or biology with um, a competitive average of mid 80s. So um, averages always change out as well throughout the year, just depending on the admission cycle as well. So you can get an updated version of what that looks like for you on our website and a more accurate estimate, um, just depending on your program. So, um, looking at the pathways for Indigenous students and how we kind of assess students who self-identify on their application, we're going to follow the following pathways here. Um, so the first one being the general admissions pathway, so the one we just talked about with the five specific courses and the competitive average listed on our website. Um, every student is going to be assessed through this first. That's just our generic um, automatic process for that. Um, and then if a student who self-identifies as Indigenous isn't able to be admitted through the first pathway, that's when we're going to start looking at these um, secondary and third pathways as well. Yeah, so the first of those being is our Indigenous admissions process. So that's going to be a GPA boost. Um, that can be a boost from either three to eight percent, just depending on your program. You do have to have a minimum of 70 percent to get this GPA boost, but it can be a really great help for students who are maybe just a little bit off of that competitive average. Maybe something didn't go good in one of your classes. Maybe you had a bad teacher, anything like that. You have a little bit of a safety net of the three to eight percent to get that into the program. Um, the next pathway we're going to look at is our Indigenous admission supplementary process. Um, so we're going to look at this process if the student is unable to be admitted through the general pathway and then the GPA boost, so the Indigenous admissions process. Um, the Indigenous admission supplementary process is a written statement by the student themselves, um, and it can be used for students who have a competitive average that's still below um, the admitting average even after the boost, or if you're missing a required course for your program, that's when we can start looking at the supplementary process in lieu of that requirement, if that makes sense. Um, so it's a written statement by the student or a video statement or a audio recording. Anything that you really feel best um, represents you as a student, we have here um, for students to kind of explain maybe if you had a really rough year um, any personal circumstances, um, maybe your school didn't offer a course that was required, or maybe you weren't able to fit it into your timetable, anything like that. We really just want to hear from the student um, and kind of get an explanation from you so that we're not just assuming um, anything about your application. So it just gives students a chance to express themselves um, and talk about themselves a little bit to the faculty. Um, and then the faculty will directly assess that and then they can admit the student if they think they'll still be successful or we'll move on to our next pathways um, if they're unsuccessful through that application. So the next pathways we are really looking at is our Indigenous Student Access Program and our Indigenous Bridging Pathways programs. Yeah, so they're a little bit different, and I'll talk about them in the next slides a little bit more expanded than here, but that would be the next pathway after the supplementary. So our Indigenous Pathway programs are pathways for students who maybe weren't able to be admitted into their desired program um, after their initial application. So these programs are built to help students get the required courses or build a competitive GPA for the program that they do want to go into. So um, we have these bridging pathways offered through the Faculty of Arts, the Faculty of Nursing, the Faculty of Science, the School of Engineering, and then the School of Architecture, Planning, and Landscape. So we offer bridging pathways through those programs. Um, and how it works, it's going to be one year of upgrading, as well as post-secondary courses. So alongside with um, required post-secondary courses, you're going to be taking an English and post-secondary and then two Indigenous Studies classes, and it really just allows you to start building those credits. Um, you'll also be taking high school courses. So if you're missing any courses um, that you need for your program or if your competitive average is low, you can start retaking those courses that you maybe need to take, um, as well as building your post-secondary as well, um, so that when you do get into your program, you're already a step ahead. You already have credits going in. Um, 
you build your schedule with the advisors as well. So it's super customizable for what you as an individual would need. Um, so you can take, even if you just need one or two high school courses, you can take those and then make the rest post-secondary so that you're taking as many courses as you would if you were in your program as well. So those all transfer over to your program itself. Um, just giving you a step ahead um, in the next year. Um, really nice about the Path Through program um, is that if you successfully complete the program, you will be guaranteed admission into your program of choice. So say if you wanted to go into, say like biochemistry, but you weren't able to be admitted, but then you went through the um, Faculty of Science Indigenous Pathways program, um, if you successfully complete that program, you're automatically gonna be admitted into biochemistry for the next year. So really, really great opportunity for students to there. And then next one being our Indigenous Student Access Program. So the Indigenous Student Access Program works the exact same way where you're taking one year of um, academic upgrading and um, post-secondary courses mixed together for depending on what you need personally. Um, the only difference is that the ISAT program is a little bit more generalized. It's not specifically for um, students who um, maybe know what they want to go into is a good one that we recommend. So if you don't know exactly what you want to start studying in university, but you just kind of want to start taking classes and explore what that looks like for you, the ISAT program can be a really great option for that as it just allows you to start taking courses and, and exploring what that looks like, as well as there's tons of supports through the program. You come in with a cohort, so you stay with the same students throughout the year. It's really great for making friends, um, as well as you have advisors that are on your side that will be checking on you, making sure you're succeeding, making sure you're um, keeping up with your classes, just checking on you to make sure you're doing well. Um, and they stay along with you for the entire year so that you have that support and you have um, the friends coming into your first year so it's not as scary. <laughs> um, the only difference between the ISAT program and the bridging pathways is that you're not going to be guaranteed admission into your program of choice the year after that. So if you were to apply into the student access program um, you'd have to reapply into your chosen post-secondary the year after that um, and still meet the admission requirements as well. So that is the difference between the two. Awesome. Worth noting that if you are admitted underneath any of the Indigenous admissions processes, you will be required to, prov um, to provide proof of Indigenous identity. And this is just so we can make sure that we're giving our supports to Indigenous students, that no one is abusing that system, that no one is taking advantage of that, that it is being held for Indigenous students, because that is who it is made for. Um, we understand that this can be a little bit of a tricky situation for some students. Status isn't as easy as um, just getting it one day. Um, we know it's a long process to get status, um, especially for certain people. So we totally understand that. And we're here to support you if you do have specific questions about what that might look like for you. Because we understand that looks different for every student. Um, yeah, we can take a status card. We can take a parent status card or a grandparent status card or a letter. Um, and if you aren't able to meet any of these, we do have a um, proof of an identity document committee that goes through its build of indigenous people um, who do the research and um, look into specific cases that are maybe a little bit more complicated. So just know that that support is available for you. And we really don't want that to um, steer students away from identifying as indigenous on their application. Awesome. So getting into a little bit more of the tuition and fees at the University of Calgary. Um, so this is a really good breakdown of what that can kind of look like. Um, of course, the tuition changes depending on the program you're interested in, um, just depending on how many um, different resources you need, um, different laboratory spaces, different um, equipment they're going to be using. It can go up or it can go down, just depending. Um, so that is a good um estimate down at the bottom there, as well as our general fees, textbooks, and supplies. We have that as well. And then our residency meal plan. If you're planning to go into residency and get a meal plan, this is kind of the estimated of what that would look like price-wise. Um, we do have our uh, undergraduate student cost estimator down at the bottom. So if you did want to get maybe a more accurate estimate to you for the program you're interested in, um, what um, your plan is to live on residency or not, you can get a good um, reference for what that would look like down at the bottom there. And I'll leave that for a second. Okay. Moving on to some of the awards and different supports um, in terms of um, what we offer to Indigenous students specifically and general awards as well. So here listed, we have just our general awards, and these are available to all students who apply um, through high school, or sorry, coming out of high school. So the first of these is going to be our automatic awards. These are not awards you have to apply for. They're awards that are automatically going to be um, 
done to every single student who applies the moment you apply. Um, one of the big ones we like to highlight is our award for students who get over 95% um, in their high school GPA. Um, they automatically get an award of $2,000. So really, really great um, incentive for students who are doing really well. Um, as well as our high school entrance awards. These are um, awards that you do have to apply for and they're found in your student center, but they are a yes and no questionnaire that probably take up to 15 minutes. So super, super quick to do and can get you a good amount of money that can really help out with your tuition if that is something you're concerned about. So we recommend all students apply for them. They're super quick, they're super easy. I didn't know about them when I first applied and I really wish I did because I missed out on this opportunity. So. Um, next is our prestige awards. Um, please note that the deadline for these awards is coming up quickly. So if you did want to consider applying for one of these, it might be something you'd have to get on pretty quick here. Um, but our prestige awards are a little bit more of a higher value award for students. Um, they go up to $25,000 um, and they do take a little bit longer to fill out as they are essay based typically. Um, so you'll just have to be prepared to sit down and write an essay. Um, it's just different depending on the award you're applying for, what they're asking for, what they want you to talk about in your essay. Um, but they have a really great and higher value. So definitely worth for students to apply for, um, even if it takes a little bit longer. So getting into the Indigenous Award statistics, um, we have tons and tons of awards specifically held for Indigenous students. So if you're considering applying for awards, um, there's so many held for Indigenous students, we would definitely recommend applying for them because not all of them get applied for and some of them just go to waste some years. Um, yeah, so apply for as many awards as you can is always my recommendation because you never know. It always helps out. Um, so we give up 25%, sorry, 25% on average of our Indigenous students do get uh, awards. So really worth applying for. That would honestly be higher if all the Indigenous students applied for awards because we just have so many. Um, we also gave $1.9 million away to Indigenous students alone last year, so there's definitely the, um, the value that is there as well. Awesome. These are just a couple of examples here um, of Indigenous-specific awards for students. Um, there are so many, though. The last time I checked, there were 32 awards for only Indigenous students to apply for, so definitely worth checking out on our awards page on our website. Um, a couple of examples here are Elizabeth and Walter Fairley Bursary Award, um, the preferences giving to single parents, or our Ellen McNeil Hamilton Bursary um, is given to um, Indigenous students. That's really the only criteria. Yeah. Awesome. So these are just a couple of important dates and deadlines um, just to keep in mind as you're starting to go through the application process um, and filling out your documentation, anything like that. Um, so applications did open on October 1st and are going to close by March 1st. So you will have until then to make your application, but we do recommend the earlier you apply, the better. Um, yeah. um, if you are still completing high school courses, you will have until June 30th to complete all of those courses for them to be considered for admissions for this year. Um, the Prestige Awards is coming up pretty quickly. So December 1st is gonna be that deadline to apply. Start working on those if you did wanna apply for those um, higher value awards. I'll leave this here for a second. If anyone wants to take a picture of this, this is just a good one to have to reference back to as you go through the process. Okay. Awesome. Well, that is really everything for me today. Here is my contact information for me and Alicia. If you ever have any questions that do come up later or along the process, we are here to support you however we can. So we have our um, email, which is probably the easiest way to get in contact with us, which is indigenous.recruiter at ucalgary.ca. I have our phone numbers here. So the top one is Alicia, with the second one being mine. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one meetings. So if you just wanted to have a quick chat about something, you can also schedule a meeting through our QR codes right there. Um, I'll leave this here for a second as well, if anyone just wants to grab a picture of that so that they remember. Awesome. Well, I will open this up for any questions, and I will finally look at the chat. <laughs> you go back to the last screen. I'm so sorry, Norma. Which screen did you want me to go to? Oh, the last screen. Okay. I... This one? Oh, the second last awards, of course. This one? This one? I'm 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you everyone for being here today. If you don't have any questions, please feel free to go. Make sure you did leave your first and last name in the chat just so we can write that down to make sure that no one is missed for the application fee waiver. Thank you, Joseph. No, the one with the awards schedule. Okay. This one here? The next one. Yes, the prestige awards you should be able to access on your student center. Um, so they'll all be under the awards tab down there. And of course, thank you, Caitlin. I'm just going through the chat here. I know Vanessa was answering a bunch of questions as we went. Um, how we participated when we apply. Yeah, of course, Ava. So um you just have to leave your first and last name in the chat. Um, we'll write it down on our end. And then when you actually make the application, you're just going to click the third option of choose alternative payment method. Um, and we'll take care of it our, on our end. So you don't have to pay for anything. You just have to click that third option and it won't make you pay right away. We'll do it on our end. I hope that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you, Ava. Perfect. Thank you, Xavier. So I'm not super sure how to say your name. I'm so sorry. Um, bra. Um. So for international students, we do have an international um, support team. I would really recommend reaching out to them. They do have different supports just depending on the country you live in. Um, and they can help you with um, assistance and like um, how to get your visa um, application in. So I would highly recommend reaching out to them. Um, if you don't mind me asking, um, which country are you from? And I can kind of point you in the right direction to go from there. So no worries, thank you, Caitlin. Perfect. So for Ghana, you will just have to reach out to our Africa recruiter. Um, you can reach her at, I will type it here for you. Perfect. So you will reach out to this email and they will be able to support you with um, uh, submitting your application for your visa. Everything like that for Indigenous students, they'll be able to support you through that. Oh, this helps for Norma. I'm just going to move back down to the other page. Just so if anyone needs to grab my um, contact information really quick, you have it there. Perfect. Okay. I'm glad I answered your question. Awesome. Um, does anyone else have any questions today? Um, we'll stick around for a couple more minutes. Other than that, you are free to go. Just please make sure you put your first and last name into the chat so we can um, write that down for you. Of course, thank you, Chloe.